the right minds likes Pepsi over Coke. But sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I didn't realize I hit the record button. Um, Pepsi just reported some earnings. I hope you're excited for it because we're going to look at it. This thing's down just a wee bit today. Nothing too crazy, but nothing too spectacular either. So what is this bad boy doing? Um, what did they do to make them do this? We're going to make this nice. My throat's nice and cleared now. We're, we're, we should be feeling good. Hopefully it doesn't uh, doesn't die on me halfway through the video like last time. So Pepsi went ahead and posted a non-gap EPS of $1.45 per share, which is in line. And a gap EPS of $1.26, um, which missed by $0.13. Cents. Gravelly throat's beginning, so I hope you're ready for gravel. Revenue of $20.64 billion, um, which is a 5.7% increase year over year. Good for them overall. Beats by $40 million. That is a good increase overall <coughs> if you're thinking about a company like this. I love it. Um, not bad, but you do see a little bit of decrease in this EPS, which makes you question, what's, what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers and see what's going on. So... Um, Again, and I've mentioned this with Coca-Cola too, what's the focus really now for companies like this? Um, these beverage and soft drink type companies, their real goal is going to be organic growth. That's the trend right now. That is what everyone is on about. We're on about sustainable. We're on about organic. That's what people are all about right now. People have lost their dang minds. That's all I'm telling you. Um, it's just a trend right now. So... I understand the valid validity, but it's a little bit much of a trend. I mean, come on now. McDonald's using these paper straws. You get about three sips in. You can't even drink the drink afterwards. My gosh, you got to drink it. You got to chug it straight from the thing. Don't even give me a straw, dude. Anyways, so Pepsi increases organic sales of 4.3% in quarter four to top the consensus estimate of 37 Good for them. Organic volume was up 2% for the food and snacks businesses during the quarter um, and 3% for the business, uh, beverages business, I should say. Operating profit was up 5% for the Pepsi-Cola brand, 28% from the Europe segment, and an offset by a 21% drop from Quaker Foods. Quaker Foods. I'm getting random calls. I'm telling you, this is, this is a joke. I'm... I swear to you, I'd mention paper straws. I'm getting a random call from a California number. I don't, I don't live in California. I don't know anyone in California. This is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. Anyways, this is wild stuff. Um, they're listening. They're listening and they're tracking us. Don't you ever doubt it. Um, looking ahead, Pepsi Co. sees uh, organic revenue growth of 4% for full year 2020. Versus a 4.1% consensus, so a little bit below consensus, and an EPS consensus below, um, EPS estimate they have is below consensus, so their guidance is a little bit below their consensus, so that's why you see the stock down a little bit. Um, the organic growth's good for them, but consensus didn't hit the mark. I was going to say, too, with this Quaker Foods um, down 21% in profit, people aren't buying their oats, apparently. Why aren't people buying their oats? It's good for the morning. You get a nice little uh, oatmeal, um, good granola bars. They got some quality granola bars. Quaker can make a mean one. I think I prefer other brands, but, you know, not to be pedantic, but we, we don't necessarily only get the the Quakers here, okay? You guys are a little pricey. Woohoo! I got some better. I'd rather have a kind bar, which is also pricey, but it tastes better, baby. Woo! Let's look at some of these fine details. That's right. From their 8K, what are we going to talk about here? Let's look at this. So Frito-Lay increased profit um, by 3%, primarily reflecting productivity savings and net revenue growth, partially offset by um, certain operating cost increases and higher advertising and marketing expenses. Additionally, a gain on the sale of an asset contributed 2% points um, to operating profit growth. Quaker Foods, let's see why they were down 21% in profit. Um, primarily reflected certain operating cost increases, higher advertising and marketing expenses, unfavorable net pricing, and a 4%, point, uh, 4 percentage point impact of 
higher commodity costs. These impacts were partially offset by me kicking my desk, um, and that hurt, by productivity savings, favorable mix, and volume growth. I don't know about that um, because you decreased profit by 21%, Quaker. You could try to point the positives, but on a, from Pepsi's perspective, they went ahead and increased profit uh, 5%, um, <clears throat> driven by a 12 percentage point impact of lower restructuring and impairment charges. Good for them. Um, net revenue growth of and productivity savings contributed to operating profit and performance um, and were partially offset by certain operating cost increases and a percentage point impact of higher commodity costs and higher advertising and marketing expenses. Additionally, higher current year gains on asset sales contributed 2.5 percentage points to operating profit performance. I sometimes can talk Sometimes I can't, and you've learned that from there. I don't really care about buy segment. We're not caring about buy business area all that much. Um, so, my gosh, we don't care about you, Quaker. Let's get into some of the good stuff, this guidance here. Um, so the company announced a 7% increase in annualized dividend to $4.09 per share from $3.82 per share. The effective dividend, uh, the dividend expected to be paid in um, June 2020, represented the company's 48th consecutive annual dividend per share increase. 48th consecutive. Love Pepsi for that. This is a good dividend company. What can I say? I like the dividend. Um, sorry, just taking one second here. You see this company right now. Is it a pretty good P.E. ratio? <clears throat> Overall, you see, I missed some run-up here. i just just pointing this out because I'm thinking about buying this bad boy. 27% last year, which really just was in line with the market. But overall, over the past five years, nothing crazy, up 46%. I might still buy this bad boy. We'll see how it goes. Um, so for the guidance here, Full-year organic revenue growth is expected to be 4%, a core effective tax rate of approximately 21%, and an increase in constant currency EPS of 7%. Good increase in EPS. I like that. Uh, approximately $11 billion in cash from operating activities and free cash flow of approximately $6 billion, which assumes net spending, uh, net capital spending of approximately $5 billion. That's good. That's good quality stuff. This this company's got some some money to to return to shareholders. Total cash returns to shareholders approximately 7.5 billion. Compromised, uh, not compromised. They're comprised of dividends of 5.5 billion and share repurchases of 2 billion. So, really cool stuff there. What else do we like to see? Um, <clears throat> you look obviously at profit. You see an increase in profit as well as your total net revenues. Um, Operating profit, you do see an increase as well. We love to see that. You see a net income decrease by quite, quite a bit. So then you look and you think of what's going on here. Um, really, the main difference here in 2018 was this uh, provision um, or benefit from income taxes where they actually made some of this cash -ish back. So... That would be your main difference there. Um, so obviously you see Frito-Lay uh, overall revenue increased um, quite a bit. Quaker pretty much stagnant. Not much of a change um, for the full year. Still not much change, but Frito-Lay saw a good little increase. Um, where Pepsi saw a nice little increase as well, but nothing too, too crazy. So profit, we already looked at that operating profit. Um, what we want to really look at uh, is, that's right, this balance sheet. Balance sheet. So current assets right now actually decreased year over year quite a little bit. Um, but overall, we see a total current assets line of $17.6 which is a decrease year over year. I don't like that um, that, that much. So that's just current assets. If we look at current liabilities of only $2.9 billion, that is a decrease year over year as well. So we do like to see um, that short-term debt decrease. Accounts payable pretty high at $17 billion, but nothing wild. So total 
Uh, current liabilities of 20 million or 20 billion versus total current assets of 17. Uh, 0.6. I mean, nothing too too crazy. I mean, I'm not too upset. Um, not too too upset by that at all. So nothing nothing too wild there. Not concerned. Overall, that's really all we need to talk about. We got all these things to to look at, but do we care about all these things? No. Obviously, they're just going to go over guidance and stuff again and go into the specific segments. So that's Pepsi for you. Is it worth buying right now? <clears throat> I'm tempted. I'm very tempted. I think it's at a very fair value. Um, good dividend payer. I'm tempted to pick this bad boy up. I would say if this stock can drop down to 140 for me. Hear me out. 140. I think I'm in. I think I'm in if this stock gets to 140. I'm almost partially in right now. Um, it's just hard to add a new position without getting rid of another one. I'm certainly going to consider adding it to uh, maybe not my main portfolio, maybe my secondary one uh, through some partial shares, maybe not going to a full position. Let's just take a look. Let's take a look, baby. Woo!